The British National Overseas Passport might look just like a regular British passport, but its history and the status it offers are complicated. So what is this passport, also known as the BNO? The travel document emerged with a new class of British nationality, introduced in the 1985 Hong Kong Act as London prepared to turn the colony over to Chinese rule. The passport was meant to boost confidence among Hong Kongers about their future after July 1, 1997, and prevent a brain drain among those worried that Beijing would limit the city's freedoms after the handover. Residents born in Hong Kong before July 1, 1997 were eligible for British Overseas Territory citizenship and could apply for BNO passports until the handover. These limited edition travel documents were no longer issued after the handover, but those who have one can get them renewed. Most Hong Kongers can also apply for a passport identifying them as a Chinese national in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of China, or for a home return permit granting access to the Chinese mainland. That means residents born in the city before 1997 could potentially hold several identities, one as a Hong Konger, another as a Chinese citizen, and the third as an overseas British national. Prior to 1997, about 3.4 million Hong Kongers were granted BNO status. The BNO travel document was initially the most popular among Hong Kongers, but it gradually lost ground to the Hong Kong SAR passport. By the end of 2018, there were fewer than 170,000 valid BNO passports still in circulation. Fees for the Hong Kong SAR document are relatively low, and it allows visa-free access to dozens more countries and regions. Hong Kongers with BNO passports can travel visa-free to 118 destinations around the world. At last count, the Hong Kong SAR documents were accepted without visas by 166 countries and regions. The British National Overseas documents also do not offer the same rights as full UK passports. BNO holders have no automatic right of abode to live or work in the UK, and they cannot pass their status onto their children. So what are the advantages for BNO passport holders? They can expect the same level of support that other British nationals enjoy from UK diplomatic posts overseas, except for missions in China, Hong Kong or Macau. While both BNO and Hong Kong SAR passport holders may visit Britain for up to six months, those with BNO documents do not need to register with local police, a process involving a £34 or $45 US dollar fee. BNO holders can enjoy the same marriage rights, including those offered to same-sex couples, as granted under British law. And those living in the UK are eligible to join the British Civil Service, Army, Royal Navy and Royal Air Force, as well as vote in or stand for elections in their constituencies of residence. Despite the nominal benefits compared with Hong Kong SAR passports, the BNO documents are still valued by Hong Kongers who have them. The most recent figures show that 26,027 people renewed their BNO passports in 2015. But the long-term future of the BNO remains an open question. China and Britain have yet to discuss what happens to the documents after Hong Kong's special one-country, two-system status comes to an end in 2047. Some experts believe the BNO passports could be either converted into Chinese PRC documents, or holders could be offered a chance to become British nationals, as was the case with some other former British colonies. Democracy now. Recent concerns about an erosion of Hong Kong's autonomy has renewed calls for BNO holders to be granted full British citizenship. An online petition that gathered more than 100,000 signatures pushed the British government to respond. But government officials insisted there are no plans to amend the law in this respect, saying such a change would be a breach of the commitments London made in the 1984 Joint Declaration. Support for expanding Hong Kong BNO citizenship rights has even come from within Britain. In 2019, nearly 130 British lawmakers and politicians, including Hong Kong's last colonial governor, Chris Patton, signed a letter to British Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab. They called on the British government to help Hong Kongers secure a second citizenship or right of abode elsewhere. As an exit insurance policy, 
if civil freedoms began to erode in the city. The response from the British government has been lukewarm so far. Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab says the proposal would put the one country, two systems model in jeopardy. China has also slammed the proposal, accusing the British politicians of not recognizing the progress Hong Kong has made as part of China since its colonial days. Uh, they still uh, uh, treat Hong Kong as uh, uh, part of the UK or still under British colonial rule. For instance, some people would like to give all the citizenship to the Hong Kong uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, MBO and uh, I think that shows their ignorance of the uh, development in Hong Kong. Beijing also accuses Britain of supporting Hong Kong's anti-government protesters, a further sign that the future of the BNO passport could prove to be as complicated as its past.